So to start this next update off, I'm going to be talking about how I've implemented a skybox into this graphical engine. Um, starting off with Skybox H, we're kind of just we're not going to do anything too much. We're just going to kind of um, bring in our shader class, and then we're going to define our skybox class. So in our construct and destructor, as per usual, there's not really going to be anything. Same with onCreate and onDestroy, um, as we're just kind of creating it so that we can kind of um, implement things through scene. Um, so if we go into skybox.cpp, as you can see here, I've included everything up at the top, and then I'm going to go into the onCreate function here, where I'm actually going to generate the textures and uh, grab a reference to the texture ID, as well as um, bind the textures of a texture cube map with the texture ID. And this will basically will be using the six different sides of this cube to to kind of pose the the skybox, because essentially what a skybox is is just a giant cube that you have placed things into with inside graphics on the wall. So um, next thing we do is we take our surface and we apply um, the uh, the positive x JPEG to our, our texture surface. And you're going to notice a lot of this is basically pretty similar, as we're just taking the positive x y z and the negative x y z to create this perfect cube skybox. Um, so as you can see here, then we're going to bind everything to the image 2D, and then we're going to do the exact same for positive Y, positive Z, negative X, negative Y, and negative Z. And those are all actually going to run very identically to each other. Um, obviously, the main difference is just what face they're facing, and aside from that, they are all bound in identical ways. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to call the texture parameter. So we're going to get the parameter, we're going to take our cube map, and then we're going to um, take our texture minimum filter and then a uh, geo linear and we're going to apply that to all of these guys here because we're going to our minimum our mag our s our t and our r and that's going to wrap our, our five sides of the box essentially the the sixth being the default um and of course we take our, our cube object and then that's where we're actually going to be applying all of these two as this is all going to be handled in our skybox class um, next, of course, we're going to take our on destroy, and we're going to clear up any of these pointers and then set them to null pointers, so that's going to free up all the memory for our program. Um, and then in our render, we're actually going to be taking the shader, applying it to the get the program, and we're going to render everything from the skybox itself, so that way that our scene really just has to tie everything together. Um, the next thing that we actually did, too, was I implemented um, a trackball. Um, and essentially what's happening here is it's going to take input from the mouse if you're holding M1 down, um, so a lot of this is going to be a lot of um, just numbers, and for, for time's sake, essentially, um, verbally what this does in a nutshell is if you click M1, it will actually take the mouse inputs and look left, right, up, down in the skybox, depending on how you're dragging the mouse. And then we take all of that, and it's going to come together perfectly to fit in our scene one, which is actually relatively empty because I've kept most of the, uh, the code to the respective um, to objects in, in this case. So we're obviously going to create our new skybox pointer. Um, and we're also going to take our camera and we're going to create pointers for those. Um, then we're going to have our on destroy, of course, when the program quits. It's going to set these guys, it's going to delete them and set them to null, meaning it's going to free up the memory. And then finally, our handle events. Our handle event has been described in our trackball, and essentially that's going to be looking for um, left, right, up, down movement um, in our mouse, so our X and our Y axis, as well as while M1 is clicked. And that would be your left click. And then, of course, we're going to clear our buffer color, we're going to clear the whole everything. And much like every other program, we're actually just going to apply a project in our view matrix to it. Um, and then we're going to just render everything, and it's good to go. So as you can see, when we run this guy here, um, it's going to show just a nice little area. Now, the issue is it will still take the X, Y, Z depending on which way you're shaping. So if I do half of a front flip and then swipe left, I'm actually going up and down now until I click on something off the program and it crashes, so sorry about that. But essentially that's, that's the gist of the, uh, the program, and I'll be back with a further update when I include reflection, or refraction and reflection into the program. All right, thank you, you guys have a great day.